Today I'm going to change my Aldi heating fluid. So my fluid is in this cupboard here. You can see if I get my torch. There's my bottle. I've taken the lid off. And I've drained the fluid from that bottle so far. It's cold and dark outside. So uh, I just quickly did that. But I'll show you underneath the van where it is now. So I take the lid off, take the cap off, and I take this panel and then I'm gonna remove that bottle once I showed you where the drain pipe is on the outside. So underneath the van now, just by the door, this is the drain pipe. So we've got this clip here, squeeze that with the pipe grips. And then just pull out this bung here, rush it out, bowl underneath, catch all the fluid. So the wooden panel is removed now. Now we're gonna squeeze these clips together, remove that pipe, remove all these screws. One, two. Hopefully without disturbing that drain pipe down the back. And remove that bottle. Uh, yesterday I found out I had the wrong size fittings for these pipes here So I had to go back to the best shop in the world Being q today to get the right size fittings But as you can see now the expansion tank is removed It is on the floor of the cupboard And I'm going to stick some inserts in there in These pipes here And then look at starting to get the old fluid out And the new fluid in this is what I bought from b &Q. So those pipes in the cupboard are 22 mil. So I gone a 22 to a 15 mil elbow, two of them. And then this pipe, the hose pipe is, I believe a 15. So I got a 15 mil insert for this pipe. And I got then the 22 mil inserts for the other end of these. So we'll see how this goes now when I put them all together. So I got my <coughs> 15 mil uh, insert and I'm gonna put that now in the end of my, it's difficult to do with one hand, but in the end of my pipe, like so. So I'm gonna do that on the other pipe as well. So one will become the inlet and the other will become the outlet. So if I get one of these speed fits now, I take this, so I just make sure that's unscrewed. Let me just put this camera down a minute. By balancing the camera on the worktop, you might see my feet. So I'm gonna put this, unscrew that, make sure that's off. Put that off of that up in there, till it goes all the way in, it doesn't go in any further. Then we're gonna lock this off. Now if I pull that, that's absolutely solid. So that should not leak at all. So I'm going to do the same now by sticking the larger insert into the pipes in the cupboard and then that then will lock into this one and then I show a nice sealed unit for my insert and my out for my in feed and my output of the clean fluid and the old fluid let's see how it goes so the pipes in the cupboard this one the longer one is the infeed, this is the outlet. So I'm gonna put my infeed in first and put my insert in there, as so, like that. And now I'm gonna get my John Guest fit in where I just put on with the hose and attach it on the other side, hopefully. I fitted that on the inlet. I couldn't video it because this cupboard is so narrow you can't get, it's difficult to get two arms in it. Either way it will go, but it's quite difficult. So I've pushed, pushed this on, push it as far down down the pipe I can, and then tighten this. So that I've got my inlet ready to go. I can do exactly the same now with the outlet, and then hopefully start filling. So there's the inlet and the outlet now fitted, with the John Guest fit-ins, 22 mil to 15 mil. Hose pipe coming out, 
on the one uh, on the one hose this top one here which is the longest one which will be the inlet i'm going to right on the end of this pipe here fit a 12 volt pump which i bought off ebay and it's going to be powered by this jumper pack here here's the pump from ebay uh tenner 12 volt hopefully it's going to work properly so it just goes there's the inlet so i'm going to submerge this in the fluid which is going to be in this bucket and i've cleaned this bucket i've cleaned it and cleaned it to make sure there's no foreign bodies in it or any kind of matter in there which is going to go and carry bacteria into my heating system so that is going to be in there submerging the fluid my hose pipe connected to you in the inlet side of the heating system and then power it up my 12 volt and hopefully that's going to push all the new fluid in to the system and the old fluid out this is the coolant i'm going to put in it's already mixed it's purple it's g13 uh, it should be good for five years um, I bought this again from the second but best shop in the world eBay and I had five sorry five yeah 15 liters for around 71 pound odd I think it was um, so considering the all this stuff is really expensive I thought it was quite a good buy so I'm gonna decant this now into the bucket and then switch on the pump so you can see a well pump already in the bucket <coughs> i'm trying to do the jubilee clip so i'm going to put my fluid in there now in this bucket and then i'm just going to switch on my power pack and see how it goes it's running dry see it yeah you're going to pump in so it's quite quick isn't it? then with the outlet i'm just going to run it into another container. This is the fluid that came out of there. That's the original fluid that came out there. Looks like um, somebody's emptied the toilet in here. So that's going in. Hopefully that's come out. So I should be able to see the color difference when the old system is flushed for the new fluid. I just put a whole five liters of that stuff into my bucket the pump is ready um so i'm hoping that it'll pump it back out and into this container let's see what happens is it turn the pump on pump's running can you fluid flowing Your air. I don't know how long it's going to take, so I'm going to turn the video off. So after a couple of seconds, look, the level has dropped in there, and the level is rising in there. <laughs> Ten pump pump. EB. Awesome. So when we see the difference in colour coming into this container, then that should be the entire system pushed out of old fluid, and now it's got new fluid in there. So I'm going to keep an eye on this bucket over here. I got another 10 litres here to top that bucket back up. So I'm going to slowly do that. There should be around 10 to 12 litres in this system. Or obviously, I'm going to watch this one does overflow as well. So I need an empty to put the old stuff in. Easy. I just poured in the set-in container of the uh, the triple QX coolant G13 coolant into there. So it's still the old stuff is still came up there. Let's see what happens. Okay, this is that one more or less full. So I'm gonna switch the pump off now and change over my empty containers. Connectors are still bone dry, both of them. 
no leaks at all. They felt around the back of the pipes, nothing at all. They're working really well. Glad I bought them. Okay, this is my second container, just about fill it up. I'm gonna put some more fluid in there, and then switch the pump back on. So that's about somewhere around 10 litres now, maybe. We should be looking at colour change now, hopefully. There's no more than 10 litres in there, anyway. I think so. 10 to 12, I reckon. I've taken about the nearly 3 litres in there. A litre and a half extra out there. So maybe I'll put it down to the two mark. Right, let's see here we go. Yeah, I just topped that bucket over it to suck in a bit of air. Well, that's just about 12 litres. If you look at that fluid in there now, that's definitely the same colour as what I'm putting in. So that's all the way through the system. So I've got about just over two litres left. So that should be enough for the expansion bottle, which is under there, when I put it all back together. So I'm going to run this bucket. Let's see how it goes. So all this run from a 12 volt battery pack. This little pump here, tenner, 10 quid on eBay. I'll tell you the history behind it, why I'm doing it myself. This is a relatively new van. So you just add this warranty so we're going to strip all this back down now clean up um put it all back together put my expansion tank back on and top that back up and then we're going to look at then bleeding the system okay um i need to show you how to get these clips back off the pipe obviously i can't do it no, i don't want because i'm in the cupboard but that'll be tight off that'll be tight pipe will be come out there that's the insert so basically you just unscrew that then you hold in this collar, push the pipe in, sorry, push the pipe into the fitting, then hold off this collar and just pull the pipe out. Hold that collar as hard as you can and just pull the pipe out straight. And that should come in then. Then you can get it get pliers and pull that out to see. It's very loose in there anyway, just can't I just can't grip it at the moment with my fingers. So there's the expansion tank back on, all fully clipped up, correct pipes on the right side. In that all the way down um so now i'm gonna fill it or fill up to this min mark in here just over while it's cold you can see now that this is your inlet and this is your outlet so that pipe is relatively full of fluid it will be a bit of air any so we're gonna fill this up and then give it a bleed see what happens put the pump back put the pump back on first and then give it a bleed Okay, so I've topped it up, put the cap back on. I am just slightly above the min because I'm open for a bit of air, which I can bleed off. Um, not open, I'm on a slope as well, so by the time that comes back down, it should not reach the max in any of the overflows. So I have a couple of bleeding areas. One there, behind the seat, the main seat in the living room, which I've already bled. No air come out, just liquid. There's one down there in the bedroom, which again, I just opened up. No air, liquid. Another one there on the other side of the bed. Uh, again, no air. Well, there's a little bit of air to that one, and then some liquid. So I put the gas on, and uh, it's sort of set for 22 minutes. Just pump it up, is it? See what happens. So it's now my heating is also my house. It's running on gas, not electric. So let's see how it goes, see if it gets hot in here. So last bleeding point now is on this radiator. My bleeding key in here. You can just about see the hole. Oh, bit of air. Lots of air. Whoop, there it is. Well, you can see, look. Ah, the purple fluid. Love it. Turn it back up. It's even the purple fluid, look. The new fluid. Get a bit of cloth. Clean it up. 
I'm going to say that for me is job done. So after all that bleeding, there's a lot of air. I found another bleed valve. There's a radiator over here behind that bench. I found another bleed valve in there. So after all that, there's a lot of air in there. So after all that bleeding, look, you can see how much the level has dropped. So I'm going to have to top that back up now to the min mark with fluid. So I topped it back up now to just over the min mark. I'm going to run the heating again now and see what happens. You can see as well, there's probably a litre and a half left under there. So out of 15 litres, it's quite a lot of uh, coolant. Okay, I pump probably back into the dirty coolant to make sure the system's clear. But <coughs> even at the some of the bleed points where there's a clear tube, I can see the purple coolant in there. So I'm really happy. As they say, job done, I reckon. So you can see from my display here, uh, this was... When I start the video early, I've looked back, I want to. It was 10 degrees inside the van. It's now 12 degrees outside. But it's now got up to 16 degrees inside the van within, I don't know, half an hour. So I'm going to say that that heating, the fluid is doing its thing. If you look at the bottle in here now, you can see it bubbling. So I'm going to say that is a witness that the fluid is circulating okay. It's going back into the bottle and up to the bottle and everything's good just above the min mark so when i take out for next weekend for whatever we wait off the shoes be next weekend when i take out next weekend then i'll look at that and top it up if necessary thanks very much job done